Hello and welcome to another edition of Critical Q&A, the show where I answer your questions based on what you've left for me in the comment section of my Critical Q&A videos or have sent to me by email at askchrisshelton at gmail.com. Lynn, I wanted to know if you're watching the Kavanaugh hearings. I feel this calls for real critical thinking and wonder if you're going to discuss this. It's just that I hear this accused judge filibustering, deflecting, character assassinating, anyone questioning his innocence, etc. And then I hear the media commentators saying they hear him sounding forthcoming and sincere and feel like we're watching different proceedings. I did find the doctor credible and not at all controversial. Would you weigh in on this and can you or anyone cut through the smoke? I think I'm seeing bad acting and lying. All right, Lynn, um, you know, I'm going to commit suicide either way if I comment on this thing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I kind of didn't really comment too much about it while this was happening. And today, as I'm recording this, um, Kavanaugh was confirmed for the Supreme Court. So he is now a sitting Supreme Court judge or will be very, very shortly if he's not considered so now. Um, the hearings themselves were uh, a dog and pony show from beginning to end. I'm pretty sure that the, that the fix was in, so to speak, and that the Republicans, the GOP, have the majority of the Senate. So it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that he was going to sail through the confirmation process no matter what happened. And that pretty much is, is what, what, what played out. The Democrats uh, tried to you know, impede it, tried to get in the way of it, tried to get it to stop through, through a lot of you know, public uh, outcry and uh, that sort of thing because of the testimony of Dr. Ford and her uh, claims of having been sexually assaulted by Kavanaugh back in college days. Well, um, that really came down to a, a real problem in terms of, you know, trying to look at both ends of what's going on and seeing how this is playing out. Um, th there was no way to tell what the truth or falseness of was of that story. I mean, a polygraph is useless and anybody who watches this channel should know that. Um, there is absolutely nothing valid about a, uh, a lie detector. So the fact that Dr. Ford took one doesn't mean anything. Um, the fact that Kavanaugh would or wouldn't or that he's ruled in the past himself that lie detectors are permissible or good tools for an investigation or something, I don't care. All that tells me is Kavanaugh doesn't know they don't work either, uh, which is pretty much just a black mark on his record against him for even endorsing them or talking about them in a legitimate way uh, because they're not legitimate. So, um, so that's, you know, that's neither here nor there, whether he was going to or not going to take a lie detector. Uh, you might as well have read his tea leaves or his star charts. So that kind of just went by the wayside. And, uh, you know, I found her to be a credible uh, witnessed a credible testimony. It's not that she gave, you know, any reasons during the course of her testimony to not believe her. Um, but, you know, the principle in this country in terms of the law, and I know this is a job interview, and that was another thing that was coming up was, this isn't innocent until proven guilty because this is a job interview. Well, yeah, you're right. Job interviews don't usually involve accusations of criminal behavior. Uh, that tends to end the job interview right there in any place except the Senate, uh, which I find kind of itself uh, fascinating and, it, and itself should be. If there was any real problem I had with this whole, like I said, dog and pony circus show with this whole thing, it was that. Uh, a credible allegation needs to be investigated and an investigation needs to take as long as it's going to take. Give, assigning an arbitrary uh, seven days, five days, three weeks, three years. It doesn't really matter. An investigation takes as long as an investigation takes. And until the investigation is over and all resources have been exhausted, all witnesses examined, all laws applicable and inapplicable sorted out and all of that, until all of that is uh, laid out bare through an objective third-party investigation, you don't have any basis to believe or not believe either side. It's just testimony that's been presented. Hers, his. Well, it's a he said, she said. And no one, not any one of you out there, uh, and certainly not me, knows for sure 
whether she is telling the truth or is lying or whether he's telling the truth or is lying. He, in his tirades, uh, in his obfuscations during the other phases of his questioning, um, through his refusal to answer questions at all, uh, his plain ignorant, um, I was completely unimpressed with his performance before the allegations and then certainly afterwards. Um, clearly his whole crying, you know, pleas and screaming and, and all of that was coached. That was something he was told to do, probably by the president, but who knows. Because um, it was very markedly different from the rest of his very calm uh, or pretty chill from what I saw. And I didn't watch all of it by any stretch, but from what I did see, um, you know, that was, that was a marked departure, which is why I say some, somebody told him to do that. That was worked out. You know, that was a strategic move that he made. Whether you thought it was a good move or a bad move, it was a strategic move. Somebody, somebody figured that out. And, uh, and then they, you know, called for this, you know, nonsense investigation that only took a few days. Uh, didn't, you know, apparently the investigators didn't interview her, didn't interview him because the testimony they gave was all that they needed to know or something. And, uh, blah, 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 blah. We can, you know, play, uh, you know, pin the needle on the investigation all day long. But it was not a thorough investigation of every witness and every resource chased down, like I mentioned earlier. So, I, and I, that's not a partisan political statement. I hope nobody's taking anything I'm saying as particularly partisan or political, because I don't mean it that way. I, I actually watched the whole thing from a fairly objective point of view. There's, there's a lot of passion on this topic, and correctly so. There's a lot of women out there who have been sexually assaulted and never saw a day of justice or the opportunity to uh, have their per the perpetrator of that crime see jail time or any, any degree of retribution or, or, like I said, justice. So there's a lot of people out there who feel very, very emotional about this, and I get that. Um, whether that means she was assaulted and whether he did it or not is a completely separate question from the inflamed passions of a lot of women out there. And, and it's hard sometimes to divide those two things and make, you know, and, and be um, fully objective about it. Uh, now, that all being said, my bias is against Kavanaugh because I don't agree with his political positions or persuasions. I don't agree with his opinions about abortion or birth control. Uh, I think his statements made about that were rather uh, dumb, <laughs> uh, to say the least. So, um, but that's already known. I'm already a known quantity on that. I lean left when it comes to women's rights and, uh, and, and that sort of, and the, and the abortion issue. So, of course, I wasn't going to want Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court because now there's a very real possibility that case law could come forward that could question or challenge Roe v. Wade and the mostly conservative court could end up overturning that and that would be a really, really bad, bad mistake if they were to do that. But that's potentially in our future. We'll see. There's a lot of things that have to happen between here and there. So I'm not trying to, I'm not saying this because I'm trying to be alarmist or trying to freak anybody out. I'm just saying that possibility now exists, whereas before we were pretty sure it didn't exist. So uh, anyway, as far as the whole thing goes, um, I think we were all treated to a, um, uh, a show that was meant to inflame uh, passions and anger uh, so that come next month in November when we have these midterm, these, these elections, these midterm elections, um, the uh, people who were really pissed about this stay pissed long enough to go to the polls and, and show that, uh, have that reflected in their votes, you know. Uh, unfortunately, as I didn't, I didn't go look, but I don't think most of the people who actually voted this through are up for re-election uh, this year. I don't, I'm not knowing about Collins in Maine, but um, I know Flake is leaving; he's retiring, and um, uh, Grassley, the guy who chaired the whole thing, well, he's not up for re-election until 2022. And um, you know, I don't know that too many people are going to remember this for that many years. We'll see. So I don't think, and you know, some of these guys, I don't think we're feeling very insecure about their job. And uh, of course, right after an event like this, people are, you know, very, and I think that that was, if any, if there was any strategy on the part of the Democrats, it was to create that. And I think they did do that. So we'll see what results uh, come November 
you know, I'm, I'm not making any predictions about it. So that's, uh, that's what I can say about all that. Mm -hmm.